Hi, and welcome to another edition of Strategic Business Insights. Today we're gonna to talk about artificial intelligence. Is artificial intelligence gonna be the demon that, that destroys humanity at some point, or is it gonna be something that's gonna make our lives easier and better? And of course, this is a huge debate right now, but I wanna introduce a concept right off the bat which will change perhaps your perspective of artificial intelligence and whether or not it's a danger or whether or not it's, it's not a danger. And it's the, it's the concept of the second user, the second wave. So whenever a new technology comes about, the initial users of that technology are usually people in, in doing research in universities, uh, people in governments, people in very large organizations. And although like the organizations, for example, they may have a profit motive, which some people uh, don't agree with, but at the end of the day, these primary players are doing things for the public good or they're not doing anything terribly horrible uh, with this technology. So that's the first wave. It's the first user. The first set of users are the research, the universities, the academic institutions, the governments, and the large corporations. Okay, but who's the second user? What's the second wave of technology? It's the second wave that you have to worry about. So let's look at social media. Social media came up basically 2005, 2006, 2007. That was really when social media started to accelerate in terms of its usage and its uh, ubiquity, if you will. Uh, everyone started to use it. And of course, at the beginning, for the most part, people were using it for predictable, fairly normal, law-abiding purposes. They weren't doing it to break the law. And today, who's using social media now? Well, ISIS, the Islamic State, is using social media, and they're using social media very effectively. So that's the second user that comes in, and now they're using it for evil, right? They're using it to propagate their own message. So all of a sudden, we have a second wave of users that are now taking advantage of social media and using it for bad purposes, not good purposes, or let's say illegal purposes rather than law abiding purposes. Well, this also parallels data in general. There's a big trend right now in big data and the use of data by companies and governments and just about everyone in between. Uh, but again, the first users were using data to support their business, to support their profit motive or their, the service they had to provide to the public if it's the government. Uh, but they were essentially law abiding purposes. But then the second wave comes in. The second user comes in. Who's that? Those are the hackers. Those are the credit card fraud people. Those are the people who are, are blackmailing people with, with data. They're finding data and then blackmailing them and getting ransoms out of them by, by threatening to post this data on the internet. So all of a sudden you have this second wave coming in that's using data for illegal purposes, not law-abiding purposes. Artificial intelligence. It's gonna be the same thing. Now, artificial intelligence isn't here yet, although the early stages of artificial intelligence are already with us. People refer to machine-to-machine -machine learning, right? Machine learning. And this is already a part of our lives, that machine learning is happening, okay? And essentially what we're talking about is when a computer program can run calculations and garner some sort of an insight or a relationship that it finds through its calculations and then it incorporates that relationship or that insight into the code which allows it to look into data even better in the future. That's machine learning, that's artificial intelligence. The, 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 the software program is learning along the way. When it comes in full force in our lives, and it's, we'll talk about that in a second, when that might be, but we're gonna have the first wave, which is gonna be academic institutions and research, people doing research, governments, and law-abiding corporations around the world. But who's gonna be the second user? Who's gonna be that second wave? Who's gonna be in the second wave? Once the technology becomes ubiquitous and everyone can get their hands on the artificial intelligence, eventually there will be models. There will be almost like an open source option. There will be uh, open source ways of incorporating artificial intelligence. Once that becomes ubiquitous and people know how to incorporate it into their own whatever interest they're pursuing, that artificial intelligence is gonna pop up 
with some hacker in Russia or China or even someone right here in the United States or in Germany or the UK where someone has ulterior motives or perhaps in the Middle East or maybe it will be ISIS again or the evolution of whatever ISIS becomes in the years ahead of us. But at the end of the day, there's going to be second users of artificial intelligence. Those are the people we have to be worried about. Those are the people who pose a threat to humanity because they might explicitly want to use artificial intelligence to destroy humanity. There are people on this planet who would love nothing more than to do precisely that. Now, a lot of people have weighed in on the artificial intelligence discussion, including Bill Gates and Elon Musk and Stephen Hawking, among others, many of them saying we have to be very careful with artificial intelligence. In fact, most of the greatest minds are saying it does pose a danger and there's only a few people who are saying it's not a danger at all. Uh, but the more important question is, when could it become a danger? And this is where uh, you get people like Ray Kurzweil who come onto the scene. Ray Kurzweil is the, the person who wrote The Singularity is Near and works for Google right now. And he's a very, very interesting man who, who has his predictions with respect to technology have been unbelievable over the years. And he's predicting that the singularity, which is essentially the when humanity and, and machines effectively merge uh, will happen in 2029. That's his prediction, not mine. Uh, and he may even adjust these predictions, but that's one more that I read of his. Uh, so we're talking about roughly 15 years from now, uh, not even 13 or 14 years from now, uh, we could be at that stage. Now, at one time, the human genome was being uh, sequenced and they had a 15 year time horizon to get that done, or at least that's what they budgeted to do it. And in year seven, they had accomplished a total of 1% of the, of the human genome. And of course, most experts at that point said, we're never gonna get it done on time. Uh, we've only done 1% and it's half the time uh, that, half the time has already elapsed. So 15 years, we've already gone through seven years, we've only gotten to 1%. Ray Kurzweil correctly hypothesized that we would make the deadline and in fact we got it done early because 1% is only 7 doublings away from 100%. 1 to 2, 2 to 4, 4 to 8, 8 to 16, 16 to 32, 32 to 64, and in that next doubling you're already over 100. So 1% if you double every year, and a lot of technologies are doubling every year, 1% is only seven years away from 100%. Uh, and right now we see that this exact same discussion is playing out with autonomous vehicles. Most of the experts are saying it's gonna be a long time before we have self-driving vehicles on the roads uh, in any sort of a large scale way. I disagree and Ray Kurzweil disagrees as well. Uh, we are very close. If this technology continues to follow Moore's law and the doubling every year, whatever that, that exact ratio is with respect to autonomous vehicles, if that exponential curve continues, we're going to see self-driving vehicles on our roads a lot sooner than you think. And the same thing could happen with artificial intelligence. We're just starting to play with it in very small, isolated, in isolated areas of research or academia, uh, and to some extent even with corporations. Uh, but if it continues along that exponential curve, it's gonna be upon us sooner than you think. And again, it's not the first user, it's not the first wave that you have to worry about. The first wave's gonna be fine. It's the second wave that comes in behind it. That's where the problems arise, and it will be a problem. Because when the technology becomes ubiquitous, there are a lot of people on this planet who are very frustrated and angry with the institutions, with the reality of our world and how it's being run and our governing bodies. And believe me, if they have an opportunity to use artificial intelligence to create Skynet or something similar, which destroys humanity or disrupts it at such a large uh, impact that it could achieve some of their goals, they'll be the first ones to do it. So we have to be educated as it gets closer, and it's sooner than you think. Thanks so much for watching this video. My name is Patrick, reminding you as always to think bigger about your business. Think bigger about your life.